back to another episode, of course, of Outcast 2 Icons. And as always, guys, if you are enjoying the series, please do drop a like on the video. Let's see if we can get this video to 150 likes. I've not done a like target before, really, um, but I figured why not give it a crack? So there we go. That's your target for today. Now, let's start off with a question of the day. And today's question isn't really uh, one that was actually it's one that I've been meaning to ask for a while. Now, I like to ask this sort of every few months uh, because by then we've had sort of an intake, almost like a, a youth intake, but a, a subscriber intake, so to speak, or I'd like to think we have. Um, so I'd like to, you know, those of you that are new, and obviously those of you that aren't new can obviously tell me as well, but I probably have already spoke to you guys about this in the past. And that is, you know, what brought you to this channel and what made you stay, um, I suppose. I, I always like doing this kind of market research because it helps me improve things in the future. And I always like to try and find ways of doing that. I've got some ideas that I'm going to hopefully come to life um, in a little while uh, when I can sort some stuff out. I do want to start trying to incorporate face cam again. Uh, we tried it once, but it didn't work properly um, <laughs> because of the, my webcam. I'm going to try and use a proper camera, like a really high quality HD camera to try and do something like that. I've got all kinds of other ideas of things I can do as well. So that's, um, yeah, I'm going to be looking forward to that. Um, also, guys, I also just wanted to take a minute to thank every one of you who watches my videos and doesn't or, is, you've come, or, or has never left a comment. Perhaps you're a lurker. Perhaps you just don't like commenting on videos. I just wanted to, you know, because I don't always get a chance to talk, chat to you guys in the comments and whatnot, um, because there's not so much interaction there. But I just wanted to take a minute to thank you um, for, you know, so those of you who may watch every single video of mine, but don't ever actually comment. And that's totally fine. Everyone has their own way of doing it. I don't always, I rarely comment on YouTube videos when I'm watching them. Sometimes I do, but most of the time I don't. And, um, yeah, I just wanted to mass say massive thanks to you as well uh, for the support you've shown over the last year, basically. Right. Um, so... I'm just going to start this episode off by saying it's like fucking Holby City up in this bitch. Um, that is that is all I need to say, and you'll understand why when we get to the Palmer game. Um, let's just say we've had our own type of Palmer drama. It's been a little bit different, though. Um, so, in the last episode, of course, we lost to Napoli. 4-2. Um, we came back and then kind of threw it away in the end. Now, I've had some interesting suggestions regarding um, our ball winning midfielder role in this system. So, it's something I might look at over the summer. I don't want to start fucking with it in the middle of the season, just in case, because I still feel that we've got a chance. You know, we are still winning plenty of games at the moment. It just seems that um, against teams that are stronger than us, we are sort of susceptible to. We aren't able to get surprise results. So, if anything, we're more likely to get a surprise defeat than we are a surprise win. That's just kind of how things are going. Um, in case you probably can't tell, I'm, I'm feeling a little bit better over the last few days i've things have been improving apart from the whole cleaning product accident yesterday uh things have improved slightly oh that actually reminds me guys um because not all of you watched both series so basically i started a predictor league um i'm not really that keen on fantasy football i play it but i always get bored so i decided to do a predictor league now i've done it for the last five years but i've never actually had a league um so it's basically where you predict the results of each uh weekend's fixtures and then you get points based on the results and stuff like that i'm sure some of you have played it before it's run by talk sport now it used to be run by someone else but um yeah i've put a link in the description or in the comments uh to it with a code so you can join our league there's still some places left in it but again because there's only 50 places because that's just how they limit the leagues which is really stupid in my opinion um only join if you are really serious about it i'm sure we can do some kind of prize for the winner uh, at the end end of the season so i'm looking forward to that and if you want to join that please do uh, feel free to stop by right so let's get back into things so yeah i'm going to change things in the in the summer hopefully when we can move some stuff around and have a real summer of testing it's almost like formula one we're going to be doing a summer of testing um so there we go and um yeah so we got things off to a relatively good start against the scene now it could have gone better for me because as you can see we had a lot of chances in this match and again vastly the better side and <clears throat> which is fantastic that's what you like to see but I just felt like these are the sort of games that we should be scoring three or four goals in, and we just aren't. Um, now, perhaps that's because Slavi Danchev isn't quite the striker I thought he... I mean, I say, he's sort of third choice for me at the moment, and the issue with that is, of course, that he's just not getting... He just isn't getting the goals for us. As you can see, we're having to rely on the likes of Simone Capra and Caterini, and our sort of strength in the midfield. But as you can see, Nabil Banali had to play on the left-hand side, and he is like like one star, maybe not even that, if I remember correctly. I don't think he's even one star player. Uh, no, wow, look at that. You see, he's a very, very young player. He's got a lot of potential, but he is not there yet. And he was the best player we had available due to the injuries we've got. And when I explain the whole Holby City uh, thing in a minute, you'll understand exactly what I mean when we get to the Palmer game. Believe me, I've never seen anything like it. Um, next up, we had Cagliari. Now, we were very, very lucky. Uh, in the sense that we were like this is what this is what I mean. We seem to get this luck against the the weaker sides. We have this little bit of extra luck, but it, we cannot use that against the bigger teams because they they all see right through us basically. Um, basically, Slavi Dancha finally did actually score a goal for us, which was always excellent. Um, unfortunately, with seven minutes to go, Luca Benetti did equalise for Cagliari. However, we did manage to score in the 90th minute and take all three points, which is fantastic. But if you look at the way the stats compare. It was very, very tight, and if we'd have got a one-all draw here, I would not have been able to complain, basically. Let's put it that way. We didn't get the one-all draw, we did get the win, and that is 
so important for us. Um, next up, though, we had Juve in the Coppa Italia first round, and it was annoying to get Juve in the first round. It really was. And as you can see, we are nowhere near as good as these guys at the moment. We just don't even come close. Uh, we actually took the lead, albeit through, you know, an own goal. So it wasn't quite uh, as... Um, emphatic as you might have liked defender deflected i mean to me it should have gone down as garcia's goal personally but you know we'll take it um lima basically puts in front but then parense or sorry parense uh basically scored himself a hat trick for juventus and just plowed them through they're going to win the league um I, as far as i can tell they're going to win the league um so yeah that, that that was one of those games that i was always going to write off if you know it happened unfortunately drawing them in the first round like that was not ideal but the fact is that's not really the first round because they're actually qualifying rounds long before that so it's weird the way the uh, italian cup works next up we have verona away from home and um this was a little bit better back on the horse a little now and starting to look a little bit like it we love a stoppage time goal and um, andrea Bolotti gave verona the lead on three minutes but then hey look at this now he's not played that much for us this year he's got a bit of potential about him and uh, this is john howe uh, setter now i was unaware as to how the the um, o with the line through it and the sort of connected A and E in, I believe it's Norwegian and Danish, or it might just be Norwegian uh, language actually is pronounced, but apparently it's pronounced the same way as the Swedish E and U um, letters are, which I already knew, so I just didn't know there was a connection like that. And so thank you to those that linked that up for me, and that's made my whole life that much little bit easier uh, knowing that now. So I should be able to get those names spot on, hopefully, in the future. So yeah, John Helseter, um gave us the lead. No, gave us a lead. Equalised for us on 27 minutes. And it was then the time for stoppage time. Slavi Danchev running through and actually finished one-on-one, -on -one, which was nice to see for once. Actually get one of those in the back of the net was delightful to see. Made it 2-1 on the stroke of half time. And in the second half, they did come at us a little bit, but we seemed to be just be set up to prevent them from doing anything. And then we caught them on the break. John Helseta threw again, and it's 3-1. And that's what I like to see. That is much more like it. Now, coming up soon. Now, the next one against Pescara is our first draw of the season. And I was a little bit... I, I don't know maybe it's hard to say because I think they did okay in this one but maybe we were slightly the best here but again Slavi Danchev scoring and getting things going for us in this one but Michel Simon uh, equalised for them on the half an hour mark now in the second half we did actually improve quite considerably I don't know what I did I can't actually remember because this was two days ago unfortunately when I played these games um, because I was playing them over the weekend and then yesterday obviously with the uh, chemical burns incident I kind of uh, could only do one uh, recording. Uh, so this one's actually been recorded on the same day as it's going out. So there you go. Uh, a bit more of that, guys. Uh, Wang John Ho gave us the lead back again. It's nice to see him getting on the score sheet. And he had a really good game. Unfortunately, not enough to win that of the match. But he did bloody well. Before Darwin Mackis, uh, which is a glorious name. I also really enjoy the Pescada logo with the dolphin on it. It's really nice. It just makes me think of a fish and chip shop. And I don't quite know why. Um, so there you go. 2-2 Two -two on the night. Now then. Now then, now then, now then. Coming up is this. Do, do. No, I, I will put the casualty theme tune or the Holby City theme tune in there. In fact, screw it, let's do it. Right, so, um, yeah, as you can see, everything on the game was even in terms of the stats. However, one area where I found that we were slightly at a disadvantage is the fact that everybody in the world got injured. Um, so, I'm going to just run you through what happened actually in the game first. So, Zivkovic gave us the lead, then Vincenzo Giannoni equalised for Palmer. Fine, fair enough. Then we won ourselves a penalty, which Barilla dispatched. We then made it 3-2 with, uh, sorry, 3-1 with Slavi Dancev scoring again, and then Mamadou Tunkara got one back for Palmer. Now, what we really do need to talk about, however, is the fact that we suffered not one, not two, not three, but four serious injuries, as well as a, another injury, in the same game. Uh, and not only that, but two of them are massively serious. Um, so... Where do we start here? So, Alex Tellez picked up an injury, but thankfully he is fine. There are worse players, we could, there are much better players we could have lost, unfortunately. Zivkovic picked up an injury. Uh, two to three months for a torn hamstring. Uh, Wang John Ho, one to two days, so he will miss today's game. And then Katarini, would you believe it, three to four months for a torn calf muscle. So, yeah, we lost in this game Wang John Ho, Zivkovic, and Katarini uh, for today's game, and... Uh, Zivkovic and Katarini, I believe, are both going to be pretty much out for the rest of the season, joining Elvis on the uh, bench as well. So we're in serious injury trouble now. Um, it is it's ridiculous. I've never seen that many in one game before. Five injuries, four of which were serious. We finished the game with, I think... I think I actually did bring off Bruno Gabrielli as well when he got injured. So I think we actually finished this match with nine men. Um... In the, was it even less? I can't even remember. I don't think I made any substitutions. No, no, all my substitutions were made through injury. Um... 
So, yeah. I don't know how we got away with that, to be honest, guys. So that's how things are at the moment. As you can see, today's game, Katarini, Zivkovic, Wang Zhongho are all out. Um, Elvis is, of course, not even mentioned there because I'm pretty certain he isn't going to be coming back anytime soon. Now, let's take a little look at the squad. Top scorer at the moment is Bolde Keita still with 10 goals. Now, he's still at the African Cup of Nations, I think. I'm not... No, he's not. He's back. Excellent. That's useful for us because that gives us a little bit more uh, of an idea. I don't think Elvis is fully fit yet. No, as you can see, he's literally just returned to full training. So it's going to be a couple of weeks at least before he's back in games as well. Uh, as for assists, Capra was six, Zivkovic was six, and Garcia was six. Spreading the love around a little bit in the midfield, which is nice. De Laurentiis has got three Man of the Match awards, which is nice as well. Uh, as for average rating, it is... Uh, let's say Zivkovic, you know, he's the one that's really standing out there. Key passes, of course, 45 for Wang John Ho. And of course, value is Falcao still, who's gone under the radar a little bit. But look at that, 10.33 tackles per game. Uh, that is that is pretty impressive, actually, when you consider what he's done. I don't think it's as good as some of the other players we've had in that position. Right, um, so let's get into today's game. It is against Sampdoria. It is, I believe, away from home. So I'm just i'm worried this is how the league table looks at the moment we're three points behind genoa but as you can see we are seven points above the likes of Atlant atalanta Cal uh, calgary fiorentina and such also have a game in hand on all of them so 10 potentially we could move 10 points clear of sixth place today and for me that would start to be us wrapping up fifth and um, but a win today would get us right back into the battle for the champions league spots and that's kind of where we're hoping but i do think that we'll struggle away today and as you can see napoli thumped udinese eight two um i would eight to be in the crowd there in that game and that is a huge one now, Sampdoria, of course, are the reigning champions. No chance of uh, retaining it, I wouldn't think. But they're going to be tough. I genuinely don't think we're going to win today. But I think on our next Livecom, we'll pick someone that is a bit more of a winnable game. Just so you guys get to see us actually hopefully win something in a game. Uh, we'll see, actually, who's coming up next. So it'll be potentially someone like Palermo or Catania. Uh, was one of those sort of sides, basically, just because to freshen things up in these, because we've been losing a couple of live comms lately, and it's not always fun to watch, is it? Um, so let's take a little gander. Oh, they've got Hoiberg. Um... Sorry, uh, Herberg. Is it Herberg or Hoi? I don't know. <laughs> right, so what can we do with this? Um, okay, so things aren't as bad as I would have feared in terms of what we can actually put out as a first team. So Cater is back, which is good. De Laurentiis will step in. Garcia's back as well now. Uh, Huseta is fine. He'll do for now. Capra, Falcao. So up top, we're not actually too bad. And in the back, Tellez, Barilla, uh, Tellez, Barilla, uh Lorenzo and Lamantia not too bad either uh Wang Jong Ho well I won't be bringing him on that's for sure but as you can see like the loss of these two probably could, will hit us pretty damn hard um I can't wait to get Elvis back but losing Zivkovic particularly he's been so important cutting in off that right hand side and Katarini well you've seen what he's done the amount of goals he's got for us this year um six which is actually not bad that's a goal every other game at the moment for him and Zivkovic hasn't exactly been poor either right let's get into this now we've gone for defensive positioning for today's game just because I felt that it was necessary wow who's that Ah, and Handanovic. Yeah, he's one of the... Um, a player I actually brought in. He's... I thought he was Swedish, I'll be honest. I had my guy scan in Scandinavia. It turns out he was actually in Iceland, and this guy's Slovenian. So the chairman probably not going to be too annoyed about... They're uh, probably not going to be too happy about that. Because um, in the summer, we are going to have to go out and sign some Scandinavian players to keep the chairman um, satiated, so to speak. So that's not ideal. But then again, I've signed some, I'm pretty certain I can find some absolute gems over in Scandinavia. So I'm looking forward to doing that, actually. It'd be quite cool to see if we can pick anyone awesome up. Now, let's see what they've got. Hudson... Oh, wow, that's just... He's just called Hudson. He sounds like a male Barbie doll. Me likey. Is that Mr. Hudson? Um, right, let's try and just keep things... Sorry, apologies, guys. My eye is running slightly there. Um, I'm not expecting us to win this. I really am not. But if we were to come up with something awesome, I would take it with open arms. But I just think that without some of those key players like Zivkovic and Katarini, we might struggle a little bit. It's a weakened team... Um, and through no fault of our own. Thankfully, Cater's back, so our top scorer is back in the team, which, oh, what an awful, awful pass. I don't know. I'm just not exactly overly confident in today's game. We'll have to... This might be one of those games where we could potentially try something. Oh, my life. What a start that is for them. Uh, okay. So someone suggested in the comments. I'm just going to try this out in today's game since I want you guys to see what it's like when it happens. So someone suggested changing the ball-winning midfielder to a central midfielder on defend. That's That was the suggestion. Um, so we're going to give that a crack for, since we're already behind 1-0 and see if that makes any kind of difference to the way this goes. Now, apparently the ball winning midfielder will get pulled out of position too much because he's charging around trying to close things down. Um, so we'll, we'll see how Falcao copes in that position, see if that helps us at all. And you guys have got to see in real time now me testing something out like this. Um, it's taken a long time. This was poor defending as well. Otavio's ball in and... Oh dear, that's really bad, I think, from number 40. I don't know who that is, but 
bad, 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 bad. Hudson's ball in. Should be cleared by Garcia. It is. It's gone to Hal Serta. He's got plenty of people running up in support. And oh my life. There were so many players there that he could have picked out with a pass, and he just failed to do... Oh, we are looking absolutely awful. Um, how our pass completion is 84%, I do not know. Because some of those passes there were the simplest ones you could possibly make, and we failed to make them. That was awful. Um, really disappointing. Just, oh my god. Guys, calm the fuck down. Yeah, just just chill. No need to rush things. That is, We've made several mistakes in that one play there. Oh. Um, we need to get a foothold in this game at the moment. It just isn't happening. Sampdoria, you can see why they were able to win the league last year. Clearly, they're a good side. Um, but we've started... We've made it very, very easy for them to be a good side in today's game. And that's not ideal. Um, so we'll give it to a half-time like this and see if it makes any difference for us. Uh, I might switch it back for the second half and see if we can compare then. Um, just to give us some sort of comparison availability. Oh, they are... Sampdoria just look first to every ball at the moment we are not looking even close to them in this match disappointing to see really um i would have liked better we played well lately obviously you know the injuries haven't helped us but it's looking a lot oh decent strike but it's gone wide they've had two click up chances so far they probably should at least have two goals by now really um they've had some really solid opportunities we are getting a lot of possession pass completion is relatively decent but we've not had a oh for Well, there you go, guys. Um, in the words of Prodigy, take me to the hospital. Um, well, well Slavid Anchev's coming on. I don't believe it. I just... I'm just going to get it back to how it was before, just for now. Um, just to see. Because I just think that... I can't believe that. If that's another serious injury, we may have some serious issues. Um, we may well need the gap that we've got over the likes of Atalanta to actually hold on to that fifth place. Um, we're not doing well so far. We're losing 1-0. What are you... F like, honestly, Frederick, what are you on? Has he been hitting the bong? Um, uh, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah, go out there and express yourselves. There we go. Let's get them fired up. Maybe that'll work. Or maybe that'll get them all sent off. Um, right, let's see. So Slavi Danchev actually responded quite well to that. We'll take that. We need something in this second half. I'm going to probably throw it on attacking. Um, just to try and... We've got no choice here. We we've offered very little in that first half in the way of attacking threat basically lots of possession but we've done nothing with it and Sampdoria seemed quite keen to let that happen so I think we need to sort of offer a bit more you know we might have to sacrifice five six percent possession in this second half but I will happily sacrifice that if it means that we get a bit more of an attacking penetrative threat more players forward basically but unfortunately with Danchev up front I'm not that confident that we're going to be able to get an equalizer here um, if anything I think that we'll probably lose this one two nil um Capra oh Win that, win that, win that! God damn it, I wish they'd go towards the ball instead of backing off like that. So much space. Shapovalov, and it's incredibly well cleared in the end. Um, don't know if that was the chance, it wasn't. Danchev, oh my days. Ribeiro, and what a save again that is from Bignoli, but my goodness. Um, perhaps we'll just stick, go to control, since we are in control of the possession. This might... Oh! Oh, that's rolled along the crossbar. What about that? Um, yeah, maybe control would work a bit better for us today, since we actually do have so much possession, it might be beneficial for us to try and do that right what have we even got off the bench here we've got a lot of players but so many are just not anywhere near up to scratch uh, would it be a good chance to give uh handanovic's debut not really it wouldn't really wang john ho do i give him a run out just to fret just to do something um he's not in great shape but maybe we can get away with it for the last 20 minutes i'll probably make a horrible error here and end up getting him um injured as well but that would be completely my fault uh, I might just leave it at that for now, actually, because the problem is we just don't have a lot of squad depth. Like, there's a lot of players on the bench there, but most of them are youth products, and I think that's why when I came in, I thought, right, this has got a decent side. Yeah, we do, but the moment we get any kind of injuries, we're going to have to go for it now. Uh, the moment we get any kind of injuries, we are really threadbare. Oh, we're so close to it. Like, it would only take one goal for it to just earn a great point here, but I wouldn't feel we'd particularly deserve it, but Ribeiro now. Ribeiro now, and it's an easy finish for Ribeiro in the end, and it is 2-0 to Sampdoria. Yeah, I think that, you know, this year we are cut out to get probably um, Europa League football. I don't think we were ever going to be able to challenge for the title this year. Not with the squad that we've got, particularly now that we've got so many players missing. We just don't have the squad depth this year. Next year, though, in the summer, we're really going to go ham. Pardon me. Uh, go ham on the signings and really try and strengthen things up. It is only going to be uh, a 2-0, so it's not the worst thing in the world for the goal difference but there was a real chance to close the gap to Genoa it's still only three points and I think there might still be the, the vaguest hope of us sneaking into that fourth spot Genoa look like the weak link of those top four because they are now seven points adrift of the others so I think that we might be able to sneak into fourth 
but unfortunately apology, apologies again there for the relatively poor result in that one and we can fold them they were pretty shocking uh, to be honest I'm going to try and experiment with things in that midfield area in the summer perhaps rather than trying it out in these games but the one thing we do need to check is whether Boulder Cater is uh, injured or not where are you oh oh no rest Oh, he's only jaded. Okay, we're good. We are good. Right. So, in the next episode, I'm thinking Catania. That would be... I was going to do Palermo, but that's a little too close. So, we'll do a few more games. We've got some winnable games coming up now. We've got, you know, Abin Alefe in 9th, Torino in 14th, Fiorentina in 8th, Palermo 15th, Sassuolo 12th, and then Catania down at the bottom. We've got some winnable matches, and I expect us to win... Well, we've got... I think we could genuinely win four out of the f five games that we've got to play there. Or is it six games? Uh, no, it's five games. I think we could win four out of those five, and that would give us a real chance at hunting down Genoa. That's the plan, anyway, because there will drop points in there, you'd think, and it would at least keep that gap. The problem is now with the other injuries we've got, it might be a bit more difficult for us to do that. So only time will tell if that's actually going to be possible. So, guys, if you like what you've seen, please do drop a like on the video, and if you fancy even more than that, please do subscribe to my channel for more Outcaster icons and From the Shadows in your inbox every other day at the moment at 5.30 and... Uh, not 5.30, at 7 o'clock, and I'll see you guys in the next episode for a home match against Catania, which you think we might actually win a live con for the first time since the opening day of the season and i'll see you guys in the next episode thanks for watching bye bye